ladies and gentlemen, get ready for combo. Let's see how long the opponent lets us do cool things. Triggers. What is happening? Commanders. <laughs> In my opinion, the most broken deck you're going to see. Monkey. This is Historic Brawl. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, still playing some historic brawl as we wait for Standard to get a shakeup from the bands. And there's a blue-white commander in historic brawl that I'm excited to play because I've loved it so much in the format of commander, and that is Heliod the Radiant Dawn, or more appropriately, Heliod the Warped Eclipse. When this enters the battlefield, you get an enchantment card that isn't a god returned to your hand. That's nice, but when you transform this, you may cast your spells as though they had flash and spells you cast cost one less to cast for each card your opponents have drawn this turn so cost reduction and flash speed casting in the command zone it's amazing in commander if you want to see it pop off i have a game on covert go crew where i play this card and it is amazing one of the greatest games i've ever played but very difficult to make work in magic arena because on magic arena the opponent's going to kill your commander and in the game of command Commander, you can kick back and it doesn't look very threatening and people will usually let you transform it and they wait until you go and do something scary before they take action. Uh, whereas in, you know, just straight up historic brawl, you see the opponent's commander, kill it, kill it now. Uh, the best way to pay off Heliod Radiant Dawn is with a bunch of spells with X in their casting cost to take advantage of all this mana cost reduction. So I have a number of ways to draw X cards, which is probably my favorite thing to do. And then across the rest of the deck, we just do blue-white controlling things to keep them busy. We also ramp up a lot. We want to get a lot of mana on the battlefield so that if the opponent is killing our commander, we can cast those big X spells and take over the game through pure card advantage. Uh, so that's why you see Gilded Lotus, Chromatic Ori, and things of that nature in the deck. And then, of course, the way that the deck goes absolutely insane is if you force your opponent to draw some cards. And the best ways I have to do that in this deck are the memory side of Commit to Memory and Time Twister, which you get by casting Oracle of the Alpha, which is lurking in here. The ability of Heliod to get back some enchantments when it enters is not a serious build around, but you want just enough enchantments that if the opponent is doing something about them, or they can go to the graveyard or discard in some way, you get some value off your Heliod, because they do try to kill Heliod a lot, and if you get an enchantment every time Heliod enters, maybe you get something for it. So there are a few more enchantments littered through the deck, uh, like Leyline of Anticipation, Smothering Tithe, and Cast Out, that may not be in many other decks. This is an interesting build, and should you just play Teferi? Probably, but this one allows for much bigger and crazier endgames, so if you really enjoy casting or like draw spells or draw X cards where X is greater than 10, this might be the best way to do it in the format. So if that sounds exciting to you, hold on for the ride. Let's dive in. Let the Warped Eclipse nonsense begin. Oh god, oh god, oh god, it's a Traxa. On the play with Smothering Tithe is interesting, but I think it's too slow. Solve the equation can get a land if we draw any land. If we draw any land. Okay, we'll try. Just draw a land. No problem. I draw land all the time. It's I'm, I'm really good at it. Let's get the curse out of our hand before the Thought Seize takes it. Aiming black, you know I'm right. Scry top, hey, the land. All right, let's see if we get to cast Solve and Smothering Tithe. Beautiful. And we're getting Amiria's call in kind of embarrassing fashion, but hey, better than nothing. The cool thing is if they blow up the Tithe, we get it back with Heliod. Oh, we top deck up the planes. Okay, so we've drawn really well so far. And that resolves. What are they going to do to it? Ah, that exiles it. Well, they didn't exile the curse, did they? Tireless Provisioner makes mana. I guess we just have to kill it. 
because it makes too much mana. Oh, wow, I get treasures for that. I can turn those into cards. I'll take that offer. That's why I don't run offer much in Historic Brawl. Okay, they can pay. But they defend that tireless provisioner, huh? Wow. Let's use the spell pierce if they're going to counter this. We got to hit our land drop here. There they go. And they did use up their treasures on that, so that feels nice. Nice to win a counter war. All right, no enchantments to discard, which is sad. Drop this irrigated farmland. I'm not gonna hold up the Swan Song because I think we're using Swan Song to protect our own spells. The opponent seems to be a counter heavy deck. Okay, Eternal Wanderer, whatever. Doesn't mean too much to me. Not yet. What do we do? We can take this hit. Then we have to think about whether or not to wrath the board again. Still no enchantments in the graveyard. We could play Heliod and transform it. Then the opponent would probably kill us some way. I think I've got to get the relic down. Maybe I use even the score to draw some. And then I rebuke them. Even the score draws two. Maybe we're activating activating a gate instead. Down to nine. Sure. All part of the rebuke. Although it implies they have another counter spell, doesn't it? Another double striker. So do we draw two or just free draw one? I think we free draw one. All right, they hit another land drop. We get syncopate, not great. All right, that resolved. That resolved. Provisioner, of course, it's carried them this whole way. Cultivate counter. Sanctum. Probably time to get Heliod going. Transform? What happens if we transform? I don't know if we'll have enough mana to protect it, right? Three, one, two, three. So we can syncopate for three on their turn. Can also key. All right, fine. But we also just have the Tyrite Sanctum open here, which I think is better. Transforming next turn is pretty good too. The bird. I keep punching this microphone. It's too close to my face. <laughs> the bird. Scarab God? Do I care? There's nothing in the graveyard. Okay. Indestructible counter? No. Let's get another spell. The veto. The mind splice. I'll go to five. Scary. But everything's got flash. Let's see what the opponent does. Okay, they're too afraid to attack all. I was almost dead if they did. I would have had to draw into an answer, but I had a feeling they'd be a coward. There's the veto. Move to end step. Mind splice. Let's go. What does the key get? Let's find out. If I do that on the opponent's turn, it costs one less. That might cost me the spark. I 
Whoo, close game. Close, close, close. I'm scared. Hold me. Will they go for it? Will they send in the provisioner? Down to one. Let's see, there's a three part even the score. Okay, that is scary. What do they got? They have four mana open. Can I do this for five? I think I can. Just enough. Commit. The bird doesn't kill me just yet. Throw it over to you. You. Yes. Hang it on. Hang it on. Atraxa. Uh, resolve. Take the action. Touch the spirit realm. I mean, it's going to happen. The hook. The Vorinclex. Dangerous. So dangerous, but I have a plan. <laughs> I have a plan. Get the Atraxa. And if only I could do this in a certain order, but I can't. I need to cut into even the score. So I don't think I should give them the new hand, right? So instead it is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, we got a verdict. We got a counter spell. We've got White Sun's Twilight. That's a lot of life, a lot of very important life. My discarding a hand size, I will have to. I'll just let this land go. Let it go. Let it go. And oh god, it's it's getting powerful. Binding. Binding. So everything loses flash if this goes away, which makes things a bit awkward. Because I can't just march and save it. Yes, I totally could. But I think what I'm supposed to do is counter this binding because I want them to play the Vorinclex and then I want to White Sun's Twilight it and I want to use March to save Heliod from the White Sun's Twilight. Uh, that's bad. That's real bad, but we have a lot of plays we can make. So many plays we can make. Uh, this is on three, so one, two, three, so four, five. Let's try for five, I think. Whirlwind Denial, what a card. One, two, three is not equal four. And they scoop it up from there. We have taken control of Atraxa at one little life. On the play against Minsk and Boo with a Curse of Silence. Gotta curse people. It's the only way to win some of these games. Because most commanders in this format are busted. You have to do anything you can against them. Our commander isn't busted. Our commander is mildly good with a lot of upside potential if left to do its thing. An Archimancer. Let's show them the power of the Time Raveler. This go. This is the power of going first with ramp. Is what you're seeing right now. It's very lopsided, but it can fizzle out. Let's see what happens. They replay an Archimancer. And they kill Teferi. We will meet again. The Rebuke. Hmm. I don't know if Esper Sentinel is good here. And maybe it's worth discarding. I don't want to discard land. Land is way too important. Demonic Tutor is amazing. 
So I can play an Esper Sentinel here. Is this Rebuke even good? Is Mind Splice good? This can get the Immortal Sun. I think this will just die. And Archimancer goes to work, making Cultivate cheaper. Does it allow for a double spell here? Essentially producing two mana? Okay, we draw a land. Five mana open, what do we get? I think we get something that draws a lot of cards because that's what our deck really came here to do. How about the OG? Oh no, it's Minsk and Boo! I will decline for now because my intention is to rebuke them. Here it comes. Look at us. We are tough. Hmm, holding back the Anarchomancer. Scared of seeing Boo get some pressure. Alright, mind splice. Get that thing ticking. Lantern of Revealing off the top. Rebuke you. Make him try again. As we set up for the giant revelation. And our commander returns. So no Minsk and Boo this turn. Kind of hoping they'd just go for Minsk and Boo again so I could use Curse of Silence. Ooh, the Tyrite Sanctum. All right, let's get you down. And I think what we do is get an indestructible counter on you instead of transform you. Minsk and Boo. I'll take that action now. Let's have that card. Land drop for the next turn. What you gonna do? Okay. See if we can get this counter here. Does that resolve? Indestructible. Because, you know, God. Nice. Lining up the big play. Let's put some pressure on, make the opponent do some blocking. Could transform here, but I want all the cards from this revelation. The greed. He will never win because it's too tiny. We go to 11. So what do they do with all that mana? Vorinclex. Okay. I think I'm trying to find a board wipe. I already rebuked them. It's kind of scary, but I, I, am, I am believing in myself. I'm betting on me. I'm betting these 10 cards find the way. Phew. Gain 10, draw 10. There's a farewell. Not really what I wanted. Although, touch the spirit realm works, doesn't it? Or no, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. All right, so if I name creatures, 
Don't get to attack Minsk and Boo. I can transform it and do this at instant speed, and then I can respond by using Touch the Spirit Realm on my own thing. I guess that's fine. What are we discarding all this stuff? Right now it's discard four cards. This one will be almost free. This one doesn't really do anything. This is a very interesting game. Actually, Lauren can hit the, if they transform the Vorinclex, it can hit the Saga. They can also try to fling a hamster at my face, but we have a chance to respond to that. And if they have nothing to fling, because of the way the trigger works, you actually can respond. You can't respond to a fling type effect, but you can respond if they go minus two. Okay, they're going plus. Good. Go big or actually go big. Just go big. They still have six cards. A lot of options. Devastator, big flyer. Okay. And they're going to combat. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. So I want to channel this, cast this. That's one, two, three, four. Leaving up one, two, three, and cost reduction. I could play these artifacts. They do have treasures. I don't think those are worth blowing up. All right, full control here. Farewell. All creatures. Just creatures. And in response, channel touch the spirit realm. What you got? Decline on the command zone because we're bringing it back to the battlefield. All right, excellent. And returns and gets back. Let's go with touch the spirit realm. As this loop can keep our Heliod protected even though we lost our indestructible counter, sadly. Oh, baby. Okay. Okay. At 21, so let's pay. A little check on Minsk and Boo here. If it's a brawl you want, okay. All right. Pass it to you. Our spells become cheaper. Oh, this pull from tomorrow is going to hit so hard. Yep. Bigger is always, always better. What will you do with that hamster, though? Your planeswalker is in danger. Ronus. Card's kind of a pain in the neck. Maybe that's what Touch the Spirit Realm is for. But it doesn't do too much to us this turn. Not yet. Attack for four, sure. Patience, patience. Right now I have pull for tomorrow for six for just two mana. The ambush. All right. In response, let's cast Touch the Spirit Realm. They're going to Crows and Grip in response. That's rude. I can't respond to that. 
it's so ice cold. Who who does this? All right. Well, I still have a very powerful pull from tomorrow. Uncounterable cards. Who plays those? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Raw. Should be enough to take over the game on its own, yeah? We got a Swords to Plowshares. We got a Commit to Memory. Alright, what enchantments hit the graveyard? I think we still had the Curse. Yep, the Curse is still there. Okay. All right, commit on Minskinbu. Swords on the hamster. Heliod on the curse. Curse the hamster lover. Transform for Flash. Yep. Or we could unload the hand a little bit more and protect with our counter spells. I guess I like that much better. Hand is looking strong. Signet's fine. Minskin Boo. Wash it away. And that will be the game. Ground them to absolute dust. On the play. Uh, syncopate against Nicole Bolas. You have to keep in mind against Bolas, your hand is going to get torn to pieces. So I'm just going to keep this because I can cycle a cast out. Yep. It begins. It begins. Smothering Tithe. Okay. Smothering Tithe might be very good. Depends how much of that new enchantment removal in black that they have. They bog me. Well, that's a good reason to hold back on the cast out. I'm sure they would have loved to save that. Glad to see the lands. Let's get the Celestis down while we can. Can be very good in these grindy matchups. A uh, planeswalker, huh? Well, at least it doesn't do much against us. Nobody knows Dominaria shadows like me. All in day's work. What's funny is I have so much. I, w I don't know, PTSD is the right term, but I have so much trauma from the other Liliana, I was instinctively looking for which card I was about to discard. So if I play this here and get back the cast out, I think the opponent's just going to kill it. Better off getting the tithe down. Especially when we have a March of Swirling Mist that we might be able to use to protect Heliod if we're patient. There's no way the opponent can afford to pay tithes this early in the game. But they also know about the clutches, so they know we can gain control of their Planeswalker if they're not careful. Land or a Relic? We could go for Relic, but I think I have enough mana. But you still want your land drops. Don't, don't mess with that. So this might get countered, but then we'll have the mana to fight back with Whirlwind. And we have March to protect, so we're doing great. 
Also, if they get the Liliana up to seven, we can gain control of it and then ultimate it. So it's a little bit of a risky line, but if we have enough mana, it can certainly work. All right, he got shrunk. You suffer. Red mana located. Narset. Narset. Oh, that's a frustrating one. But we can we can take a chunk out of Narset. It'll be okay. Those who cannot perceive beyond the veil of reality put thoughtfulness before action. Whiff. Love that. Here's the cut down. Okay. They knew about this, so maybe they have another removal spell that they're lining up. Blue Suns. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Idiot. Me being the idiot, in case that was unclear. Attack. Drop it. It would have worked that time, but I like my hand. Yep. Shrinks on seven. That Liliana. I knew it. Um, if they make us sacrifice this, we still have clutches into denial. And you got to think, they must have some kind of a counterspell, right? But man, is it bad to lose this Heliod. All Planeswalkers, huh? It's like the anti-Gatewatch. But I think if we show some patience here, I think we'll be okay. Especially since we get some Heliod value from the graveyard. Not forgetting about Narset this time. Come to daddy. And yeah, see, they have the counter spell. They had it. Ultimate. If you've never seen a Lily on a Last Hope ultimate, the time has come. I'm calling the shots here. And we can even get back the clutches with the Heliod. Goodbye, Blue Sun. Feels bad. Test to talents. Yeah, they were they were set up, and now they have a Shark Typhoon. But I think we've set ourselves up for a winning position, even though they have Bolas Shark Typhoon. <laughs> Clutches. <laughs> Might as well transform. We have nothing else to do with the mana. And here come more zombies. Every turn, more zombies. And that's gonna do it! Ooh, I was gonna take that shark typhoon. I was gonna mind splice, maybe cast some big X spells. Beautiful. On the play against Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge, a Planeswalker that uses affinity for artifacts. We have the Immortal Sun in hand, and Demir isn't known for dealing with artifacts well, so I'm going to keep. Hope we don't get thought seized. Our hand doesn't do much otherwise, so I am very nervous, but maybe Touch the Spirit Realm will hit a mana rock or something. They got a Fountain of Renewal, sure. Esper Sentinel. That should be pretty good. Jwari Disruption in hand. Let's go ahead and get that down as a land because we want to make sure we play key next turn. So they gain one life every upkeep, and for three mana they can draw a card. Just an artifact that chills on the battlefield, really. Felt like the opponent priority checked me there and then passed, so maybe we don't run out key. Could definitely be a counter spell here. However, make him have it. 
I'm going to try to be more assertive in this game. Besides, a counter spell might result in us drawing a card, like with Esper Sentinel. There's for knowledge, draw three, discard two, unless you discard an artifact. Perfect for the deck. They discard Mindstone. They must have just drawn it, or they would have played it before, I think. Let's grab the Demonic Tutor. Yes. Discard touch the Spirit Realm. We can get it back with Heliod. Not sure what I'd even Demonic Tutor for, since we already have the Immortal Sun. We hit our land drop, which is wonderful. Keep going. All right, they've got all this open mana, right? And if they had a counter spell, they probably would have countered the key. They might counter Immortal Sun. Let's go for Heliod. Heliod takes the deck to the next level, but it's not required to win, and it's good value if it resolves. Excellent. The Touch the Spirit Realm can also protect Heliod. You hold the multiverse, so opponent really likes their card draw. Well, they're giving me card draw too, so I appreciate it. Esper Sentinel has drawn two cards now. Opponent has played Thirst and Behold. There is a combo version of this deck. It uses a Psy Master Thopterist and uh, enough artifacts and ancient statue or whatever that statue is that can keep bouncing itself over and over. It's really popular with Aetherflux Reservoir combos. But in this deck with Psy, it just makes a million Thopters and then you kill the opponent with the claw. Soul Shatter. Uh, yeah, let's exile the Heliod. And decline to put it in command zone. And then Soul Shatter gets our Esper Sentinel, which did its job. Then Heliod comes back and gets back Touch the Spirit Realm, which is a sweet combo for protection. Now to be the Warped Eclipse. Yes! All right, with Demonic Tutor in hand and able to play it at instant speed, we can answer l pretty much anything gonna be great you see our spells reduced by one because it's now the opponent's turn you play chromatic lantern passing the turn I think I really do want to keep protection up for Heliod at all times if I can let's demonic tutor and try to take our mana situation to the next level <laughs> Makes so much mana. I'm in a rush to play nothing. And if I play things on my opponent's turn, they're actually cheaper. So we are very cool right now. Everybody's cool. They still have six cards in hand. Seagate Restoration. All right. Worry. Dismissed. <laughs> Immortal Sun. Beautiful. I was hoping to drop the Immortal Sun in response to casting the Tezzeret, but this works too. Oh my goodness, look at all the mana. And the cost reduction about to go into a Sphinx's Revelation. So the interesting thing about the Seagate Restoration is if I let that resolve, I actually get an even bigger Sphinx's Revelation. But this Thought Monitor is going to make it work. Karn's Legacy, sure. I'm not afraid of that card. Doesn't do anything with the Immortal Sun on the field. Alright, so a reduction of 3. 8. 9, 10... 15. Boom! Oh, a reduction of four from Immortal Sun, and I missed it. All right, let's go. No, don't leave! I have so many free mana rocks I wanted to play. On the play against Lagrella. Ooh, discontinuity against Lagrella could be really juicy if we get there. I'll keep this permission filled hand. I should at least have time to play out all my lands. But yeah, the trick is like they put like a blink 
being on the stack, they exile something, and then you uh, just kind of, like Yorian, you don't let it come back. You, you end the turn, and they don't get the return trigger. What's it gonna be, opponent? What's it gonna be? Panharmonicon. What a card! No. Nice? There's nothing nice about me. Sure. Just hitting the land drops and the ramp. It's gonna make my job really hard. Metamorph. Uh, on a ramp card? Okay. Whatever. So you've got a whole bunch of mana. I guess I'll fight a little bit. This they can blink. Let's not do that. Our opponent has some kind of issue where they think everything's nice. There's nothing nice about this. I do this to be the scum of the earth to you. It's what I live for. Uh-huh. Get gone. Not sure what they're waiting for. Omen gives me an opportunity to get value with Heliod in a matchup where value can really matter, even if we don't get to do many Heliod shenanigans. I know, blue-white. Our opponent's gonna make food in protest. Key to fairy. Both are pretty good. Neither is incredible. But I will keep it. Let's go with to fairy bounce the omen for a good old combo. And we do hit our land drop like a boss. They have plenty of mana. Let's see what they do. Gotta be something good you can do with all that. They're gonna go for Lagrella, sure. The time has come to have a battlefield presence. We're not giving them a creature to exile, so they have to exile their goose. Now be ready for the flicker nonsense shenanigans. Ooh, Timeless Witness is gross. That's a really good one. Lauren doesn't really do much. Touch the spirit realm. Can knock out the timeless witness. I think both of these would be a mistake. Swan song. That's more like it. Are we at the part where we want to discontinuity and end the turn when they put the Thassa on the stack? Pro oh, wait, this counters Thassa. Do I need to protect a fairy? I don't think so. In that case. Well. Let's go like this. Putrefy, claim the firstborn and growth spiral. So I'll take the putrefy.
All right, to fairy down. Mana is starting to build up. Swan song. I swear the ability to hit enchantments is what makes this so much better than so many other cards. Oh, ephemerate the timeless witness. Ugh. All right, I'm I'm getting annoyed. Probably discontinuity time. I, I'm, I'm getting frustrated. All right, so let's see. They ephemerate, they target the witness, I'm guessing. They target the Lagrella. Because I'll target creature. Okay. Sure. Celestis, yeah. Last card. Just the bird? Okay, now they're now they're being a little coy. I mean these have summoning sickness, I know, but they haven't cast Thas yet. There it is. Okay. So, full control. Target here. Trigger on the stack. That's not a trigger? No, it just happens? Well, that's lame. Well, this still works. Supreme Verdict. If I blow these up now, the Timeless Witness can still get back the Ephemerate, but then they have to exile it to do it. Hits, and nothing but the hits. If I had one more mana, I could sack the omen and then get it back, and I'm still trying to decide if that's worth it. And I've decided no, we're just going in. But then the opponent will Lagrella my Heliod, and then we'll have to find a way to get rid of Lagrella. Like, I'm just gonna decline. You can have it. I'll figure it out eventually, but now you can't do all your flicker stuff with Lagrella. Um. Okay. Sure. Weird. So they're just bringing it back to do this again, huh? Yeah, I think one of the keys to fighting Lagrella that people don't understand is you just let the Lagrella take your commander because they want to flicker their Lagrella and do tricks anyway. I'll wait till end step. I can take the two. So are they going to bring out the Timeless Witness? The Thassa is gone, but they can get the Ephemerate. First they'll draw with the Mind Stone. They're in the tank now. See what they think of this cast out on the stack. Resolves. Let's see what they do with it. Command zone? Command zone. Nice. Alright, they get to Charming Prince. I get the omen. Uh okay. Loses abilities. Sure, I still get the omen. The value could definitely matter in this game. This lets us play at flash speed anyway, but at this point we need a draw spell. One of the big X spells. That's how we win the game. There we go. 
Making the Angels doesn't really do much in this matchup, and I don't really want to pay three life for the card. We'll probably see plenty of cards soon. The opponent doesn't really want to attack me because I have perpetual effects. Masked Vandal. Okay. They have a creature card to exile. They do have the goose. All right, big spell coming up. Do we get a fresh seven? Can we break this game open? Yes. Feels good. That uh, farewell is looking juicy, isn't it? They're activating the Celestis. They're really trying to hold on to Timeless Witness. All right, I attack you with Heliod. Because I don't think they'll block. Bye. Artifacts, creatures, graveyards. You're going to eat a little food on the way out. Remove the perpetual effects. Okay. And you might have been like, but now you don't have an enchantment in your graveyard. Well, I expect to have this one. Lagrella. Where'd you go? There you go. You're expensive now. I've also got the omen. But I also don't need Heliod to win anytime soon. I've got plenty of other really cool things to do. Like Narset. Sure, I'll take a Tail's End. And now sack this. Heliod is six. All right, I've got an Omen of the Sea and Gate to Sea Tower kind of turn coming up. The Siphoner with nothing in the graveyard. That's just to attack the Narset. We get Thassa's Intervention. Sloppy technique. All right, scry. Those are lands, which we don't need more of right this moment. So good scries. Bell Pierce unlikely to matter much. Here's Heliod. Get back the omen. The value. The value. Think of the value. We could turn it into Warped Eclipse right, right there, but I'm holding up Plaza of Heroes. Mirror Hall Mimic, copy of any creature on the battlefield, huh? Okay. They have a Heliod. It does copy the backside. So they want to play at flash speed along with me? Interesting. All right, let's see what we find with Omen. Hey! You even got to transform your Heliod first. Why would you leave? It was going to get so interesting, but yes, we were going to absolutely drown them in value from that point. And we are back for the post-game wraps on Heliod the Radiant Dawn slash Warped Eclipse. And as I mentioned in the intro, if you strictly want wins, then you can play Teferi, any of the Teferis in the command zone, and your win rate will be better because those are just much better blue-white commanders. And they let you play a straightforward game plan of counter things and then get value out of your commander and win. Heliod the Radiant Dawn is for people which are with a much different and slightly specific taste. You don't just want to plus a Teferi to draw one card every turn, one additional card. You want to pay X is seven or greater and draw a whole new hand like every turn when you get going. These are players who probably lived through the era of standard where Sphinx's revelation was a win con. And to those players, I got you. 
you know, this is the deck for you because you cast huge X spell and a huge X spell. And if the opponent hasn't conceded, you can do this over and over again at absolute nauseum. And X can become worth huge amounts of mana if they don't leave, thanks to cards like Time Twister. So, yeah, I've, I, I think that this scratches a different itch and it also plays in a different queue from the Teferis who play in Hell queue. So you get a different variety of competition, which has value in Magic Arena because that's the whole reason we go play Historic Brawl anyway, right? For a little bit of variety as opposed to the ad nauseum of a format like Standard or the Hell queue itself, which becomes pretty repetitive as well. So this is a good twist on that and you get to play the best colors, blue and white. It's amazing. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. What is today? It's Saturday. I'm doing some rework in the office. You may already see a few little different things uh, here on your side, but I'm moving things around. I'm really excited about two things. Thing one is over here. Thing two is over here. One of them is a vertical monitor where I have my Discord open all the time. The other is a vertical monitor where I have my Spotify open all the time so I can just hit the tunes while I'm doing all the non-gameplay stuff. And yeah, excited about it. Also going on today is the Arena Championship. Uh, it's standard. It's a dead standard, so it's about to rotate. And it's pretty established, but still fun to watch the Arena Championships. Nathan Stoyer just won the, uh, he won Worlds, he won a Pro Tour, and now he's trying to win the Arena Championship. He would be the first player to have done all three, so I hope he's doing well today. And then the last little, like, kind of what's going on in my world in life note is that the bands are coming on Monday. Memorial Day! A memorial to bands! Dun 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 bum 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 So on B Day, uh let me know in the comments, should I stream it? Should I make a covert go to video about it? Should I stream it on Twitch or YouTube? I could do a poll. I hate polls. I really hate polls because then people think that the outcome is what's important and they demand that you do the outcome or they think you're like cheating on the poll. And just because something wins a poll doesn't mean necessarily that I want to do it. I do want to know how you feel, but people take poll results too seriously, which is why I appreciate comments instead. So yeah, uh, sometime on Monday though, we'll hear about bands. You'll hear from me about bands. Maybe you can watch me react to bands. It'll be fun. Standard might have a life. And then we can get back into it. But for today, Historic Brawl, Heliod, the Warped Eclipse. Very fun. Go try it out. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next one. You are cool. Coming transmission. Cool kids, come in, cool kids. You're cool so you can hear this. We don't have much time. Join me at... at, at. Covert Go Blue HQ. Follow the coordinates on your screen to Covert Go Blue HQ. Covert Go Blue HQ is your ultimate destination for everything CGB. Get your play mats. Get your shark tokens. And get the first look at all new merchandise that CGB releases. There's even more that's on the way. Gear up with the only merch that's 100% certified by the one in best of one. At the coolest place for the cool kids, CoolStuffInc.com. Head to CoolStuffInc.com slash CGB. I'll see you at Covert Go Blue HQ. That's Covert Go Blue HQ.